5 million people die from the big three, malaria, HIV and tuberculosis every year. And at the same time, 1 billion people live with no infrastructure, no roads and no electricity. For diagnosing the big three, centrifuges are needed to help isolate and detect low levels of infection, pathogens and parasites. One of the things that I'm passionate about and think a lot about is how do you make scientific tools available to a broader group of people. Paperfuge is something that a healthcare worker or a doctor or even a volunteer could be trained to use and be in the middle of nowhere and still provide a diagnostics that is actually essential. The idea really originates from the field. It was one of those trips I distinctly remember to Uganda. And on one of the visits to a primary healthcare clinic, I made a realization uh, that a very important tool that's used in medical science, uh, which is a centrifuge, was being used as a doorstop. And it was a little, uh, I mean, it was funny one second, but quite ironic because we were in the middle of nowhere with patients with terrible infectious diseases needing a lot of help and here is a scientific tool being used as a doorstop and then later on I realized that uh, there was no electricity neither in that hospital or the primary health center nor in that entire region and so having an electrical equipment that is important and necessary for diagnosis just sitting there means nothing. That was the spark of an idea to see, aha, we need to tackle this problem. We need to think about a completely different way to solve this problem. I've been interested in toys and wacky things all my life. It kind of stuck in my head that there are a lot of spinning toys out there. You know, as a kid, you've all played with some yo-yos. So I started thinking hard about yo-yos, asking a question, what is the fundamental limit that you can spin a yo-yo, how fast? But we actually figured out some of the physics of yo-yos to see could we use them to spin biological samples. Now that was not enough because uh, yo-yos technically cannot go fast enough because of just laws of physics. We took a step back and then we started thinking about all possible toys that spin. We went through, you know, spinning tops, these gyroscopes. And out of all that search, we stumbled upon this toy uh, called the Whirly Gig which happens to be a very ancient toy, actually, in fact, the oldest toy in the uh, history of mankind. And one of the fascinating things about it was, although this is a toy that's sitting in front of our eyes, nobody actually understood how it worked. And much of the design work was actually done uh, just purely doing pencil and paper and mathematics to be able to optimize this tool to say, aha, what is the fastest spinning object we could make with human power? And that's what led to Paperfuge which now at this point is uh, the world's fastest spinning object with human power. We have the world record for it. When this object is spinning in my hands, this is spinning around 120,000 RPMs. I mean, just imagine 120,000 times it's spinning per minute. So it's an incredibly fast spinning object, but it's seemingly or deceptively so simple. So I think the biggest challenge that we face sometimes is people's perception of what a tool, what does it mean to solve a problem or what does it mean to build a tool? Initially, we were a little bit, you know, just a little shy, like, you know, to be able to share this tool. And of course, the moment we shared it with the healthcare workers and doctors, they immediately absorbed it. Our, their reactions and their eyes lit up once they understood the power of the tool and once we had showed them what it's capable of because they actually understand far better the needs of their communities than we do. Thinking in constraints is an essential aspect of design and if more people do that, I would be pretty happy. And I think one of the things that we often do with frugal science and tools is we share that tool and the know-how of the tool openly with people. When you empower people with these tools but you don't dictate what they should do, they become creative. I grew up in India. I sat in government hospitals for half a day or a day just to get like a single prick of blood to be told what I have. And so I think I have empathy for these problems because I've faced them myself. So I think the biggest factor I feel in the context of design is 
experience the problem first. Because once you experience the problem, you truly understand what it means in that context. I don't think outside the box, I think in the box. Because the box provides me constraints for rational solutions that can scale. It's very important for me for things that I do to actually scale and get in hands of people because you can't solve a problem sitting in your office dreaming in a glass box. You really have to be in the problem yourself to feel the urge to crack it. It allowed us to build an extremely simple 20 cents of materials into an object that actually separates out blood samples, separate out disease samples. Within 30 seconds, we can separate plasma from whole blood. We can separate malaria parasites. We can separate many different types of pathogens that are found commonly in blood, urine, and stool. And then that separation allows us to be able to detect them using different sets of tools. So I kind of think myself as a designer for toothbrushes and pencils something that is so simple, so available to people, but still solves an incredibly important need in society. So that's Paperfuge.